Alrighty guys, welcome back to Star Wars Views. Today I am going to be reviewing issue 4 of the uh, ongoing uh, comic series Star Wars Bounty Hunters. So yeah, um, issue 4 titled uh, Galaxy's Tenliest Part 4 Hunter's Mutiny. And it was written by Ethan Sachs of Art by Palo Villa Noella and it came out August 19th, 2020. So yeah, just the other day. Um, but yeah, uh, you know. I thought the issue was okay, um, you know, better than the, uh, last one. Uh, I probably, it was probably my favorite issue of the series so far, um, still not by a lot, I still thought it was just okay, and whatnot, um, I was as lost on what was going on, um, and confused as much, um, as the first three issues, so. You know, that you know, works out better, but, uh, yeah, you know, th this issue was a lot more, uh, focused and whatnot, more, it was a lot more well-paced, uh, like I said, I didn't find as much stuff confusing, and, you know, it didn't introduce, like, a bunch of characters and whatnot to the story, um, oh, yeah, uh, it does, you know, kind of introduce one character they were uh, oh technically they were in a other issue but yeah and I, well I guess also another one too uh, but they appeared very briefly at the end near the end of the uh, last issue so yeah which uh, that that character I really enjoyed and, you know that character and how they're, you know, in the story and whatnot. I, uh, really enjoyed all that, which I'll get into more than that in a moment. So, yeah, you know, I enjoyed, you know, uh, that, and I, you know, I just like this issue more, mainly because it's, it's more focused and more well-paced, wasn't, like, all over the place, and Cutting to so many different characters, uh, mainly because it's started to converge uh, more, and some characters kind of are out of the picture a little now. <laughs> um, so you know that that obviously helps. Uh, but yeah, you know, I I liked where the story went and whatnot. So yeah, um, although I will say I'm not as super invested into the, uh, series as much as, like, definitely the other, uh, current ongoing, uh, series, like, um, you know, the main Star Wars one, Vader and Aphra, um, the, the current 2021s, um, you know, I, I'm a lot more into those than I, than I am this, so, yeah, but, uh, you know, I, I still enjoyed it, but, and, you know, it, it obviously could, it, definitely improve more in uh, later issues, but, yeah, um, the art once again was great, I really liked it, so, yeah, not much else to add there, so, I guess I'll jump into the breakdown now, which the issue picks up pretty much uh, right where the last one ended off with, uh, Valance and Tong Tonga, Tonga, however you pronounce her name, on a Valance's ship, and, you know, Tong Tonga tells Valance about some bombing on a planet called Cavernous 4, and that, you know, it was the mourner's whale attacking the unbroken clan, and she talks about how a bunch of people died and whatnot. But, you know, she says it was all on the Kano Lash because, you know, ever since she assassinated the, uh, she says the two families, uh, hares, they have uh, been at war. Um, which, uh, Kano Lash only killed one, but. Yeah, kind of his a mention of that later, but, uh, yeah, you know, um, and then, you know, she asked Valance that, you know, that he, that, then she asked Valance that, you know, he should want Lash dead and whatnot, which Valance responds by saying that he has his reasons to find her. Obviously not saying, you know, he wants her dead, but, you know, to tell you, obviously, Thinks that, and, you know, says, uh, you know, good, and that they can help each other out, 
but Valance needs to wear a restraint bolt, which Valance, you know, reluctantly agrees to, and, you know, then Tom you know, says that, you know, she'll, uh, rip out his, uh, cyborg shit, whatever it is, and find out where, uh, Lash is, which, you know, he says, oh, no need to, uh, she's on, uh, Busan, so, yeah, yeah, but, you know, because of the restraining bolt, uh, she, uh, stuns him, and, you know, he's like, what the fuck, uh, but, anyways, and it cuts to, uh, Rusin, um, where, you know, picks up with, uh, Lash in the bounty hunter Oris, who has kidnapped this girl named, uh, Catalan, I don't know, and, you know, uh, obviously, like, Oris, you know, Attack slash and you know, but before you know, says not to not to come near near him and but you know, uh, Lash then says that she'll do whatever he wants as long as he doesn't harm the girl, which you know, Oris is a bit disappointed about that, saying he was expecting a better challenge. Which uh, Catalan says to uh, leave Lash alone and you know, or that. She'll do something, and uh, we see her pulling something out of her uh, pocket. It's, you know, or says, oh, what, what are you going to do? And it's, uh, girl uh, responds by saying, you know, this while stabbing in the head with the dagger she pulled out. Uh, which doesn't kill him right, right away, but, uh, right, he's like, and see, I guess he gets it out, but, uh, you know, last, like, Hits him with a rifle and then strangles him with his own leg tentacle thingy. So, yeah. Uh, but then, you know, Lash tells Catalan to get her things and head to the ship. And that more bounty hunters will com- will be coming. Uh, which we then see Valance and Tonga at Lash's home. You know, they see Yoris' dead body and, and whatnot. And, you know, uh... And obviously, you know, Lash isn't there anymore, and Tonga says, you know, it's another dead end. But Valance says that they should go, uh, you know, asking around the village about about her. Um, but then it cuts to the uh, planet uh, Gamora, where uh, we see a mysterious figure walk up the boss. He was you know, still handcuffed and a bit out of it from his uh, fight with Valance in the last issue. Um, but in the serious figure ass Bosk, uh, you know, where he went, and, you know, Bosk asks if it's, you know, he's talking about Valance, which he is, and so Bosk says, uh, Lash left him uh, coordinates to the planet Rusan, which you know, obviously already in that, but, uh, and that they, uh, can still catch him, which the figure is like, we, and knocks Bosk out saying, there is no we. Uh, but then, you know, it cuts back to Valencia Tonga, you know, asking around the village about Lash and whatnot. And, you know, they come along, uh, someone who says, you know, that Lash is welcome there, but they aren't. So, you know, they start to attack. And, um, a uh, Nexu attacks Valance while uh, Tonga shoots some uh, villagers. But then a uh, elderly man comes up. Um, Ew. Was uh, featured in the last issue, <laughs> you know, t- telling Tonga not to kill the Nexu, and that it's you know still a cop, and which you know, she responds to, but saying that to get it off of her cyborg friend, then which the older man then figures out that the cyborg is Valance, and that he you knows that uh, Lash said he he would be coming, and you know Valance asks you know where Lash is, and he says close by. So then, you know, we see Valance and Tonga heading into uh, the orbit of the planet, um, where there's wreckage of a uh, Clone Wars battle uh, between Nazi Separatists and, you know, Republic and whatnot. And, you know, we see that Lash has landed her ship in the wreckage. Um, so then we'll show up on the scanners and whatnot. And, you know, so they land on the air dock area and head in where we see uh, Lash and Catalan and you know 
flash you know, talks of Vance and you know, says that she hopes uh, he accepted her request. But Tonga goes up putting, you know, with her blaster up to her and whatnot, saying that you know, she killed her brother and whatnot. And, but Valance grabs a hold of her. And he says not to bother with the string bolt because it's broken you know, by the uh, Nexu. But um, then Lash says, you know, to let her go and that, you know, she deserves to know what happened to her brother. And, and you know, afterwards decide if she wants to kill her or not. So, I'm going to get a flashback of that mission on Corellia, you know, where we see the moment right before uh, Lash killed Comus. Um, there's the hair to the, uh, what, what, what I believe is the, um, Mourner's Whale. And, you know, that's when Comus is about to kill someone, but now it's revealed who that was, which it was an unbroken clan woman who is uh, pregnant with Comus's child. And so, you know, so like I said, you know, Lash kills him before, you know, he can kill the pregnant woman, um, which then, you know, he's seen a moment to honor, says the vet and Valance that they gotta leave and whatnot, uh, you know, from the first issue, but then, you know, we see Lash talk to the woman who reveals her name's uh, Corinthia, and that you know, she is the daughter of the one true, and that she's the daughter of the one true ruler of the unbroken clan, and that you know, um, if her father figured out who the uh, you know about the child and whatnot, they would kill them. Uh, I get, I don't know the. This is a bit confusing to me. I guess she planned to escape with Comus or something like that, but Comus was going to kill her. I don't know. This part was kind of confusing to me, but, um, you know, wasn't enough of dialogue here, but, you know, Lash, you know, talks to Tonga and, you know, says that they could still survive if they save the woman. So, you know, he agrees, and then you see him fleeing from the building, and, you know, coming across a boss, he's you know, wondering what's going on, and, you know, Tonger says that, you know, you know, help them out and whatnot, but then a blaster bolt, you know, comes and hits and kills Tonger, uh, which then we see in the present, you know, Lash says that, you know, they obviously missed someone, probably a sniper, and that's what killed Tonger, uh, but then she goes on saying that, Corinthia died weeks later at childbirth, at childbirth, and that she's responsible for her death and Comus's. And then she goes on to say, "Just to go ahead and kill her because the, the pneumogray, I don't know, some disease is going to kill her." And you know that's why she came out of hiding before the girl of, of age, and you know uh, mentioned some about the girl's birthright. Which, you know, Valance is, like, shocked about, you know, that she's dying. But uh, Tonga asks about the birthright uh, she mentioned, which Lash, you know, says she, the girl, uh, you know, um, what her name is, Catalina, Catalina, I don't know, you know, is the heir to the two syndicates. Um, because, you know, she's the, you know, daughter of the, uh, one hair of the Warner's Whale and one hair of the Unbroken Clan, so. Yeah, and that, you know, once she's uh, of age, she will uh, might be able to uh, end the conflict and the war between, you know, the two syndicates. But, you know, that she needs to uh, be protected till then. So, yeah, and then you. Tonga says that you know, she was she just stayed home and you know then she's gonna go back and forget this all happened but she won't because the next image we'll see you know her being shot by blaster bolt which it's then revealed that that was from Boba Fett you know and it says to Lash Flan it says come a long way to kill them and that's where it ends off so yeah um you know 
I guess I, I thought the issue was okay. I like the twist of that, you know, flashback and, you know, with the one actually went down on the mission and whatnot. And, you know, when, what's going on with this, you know, girl and whatnot. Definitely into all of that. Um, I'm interested to see how the, all that's going to be uh, resolved. I believe the next issue is going to end. It's like Galaxy's Deadliest uh, arc. So, yeah, and then issue six will pick up with something else. I guess it still be continuing on with this storyline, just, you know, pushing it forward more. Uh, so, yeah, you know, I was interested to see what going to go on there. Um, but yeah, you know, nice step of that back too. Oh yeah, I was, you know, when the series was announced, I was expecting, like, it more to be a team up with him of the Lance, but obviously, you know, he's more the, the villain, but <laughs> and, and the series seems to be a lot more uh, mainly focused on the Lance, and definitely in the long run too, and later issues, so. Yeah, but you know, that's not really bad thing, but, yeah, you know, I, uh, like I said, thought the issue was okay, the, definitely liked how it was a lot more focused and whatnot, you know, enjoyed where this story went, um, hopefully the next, uh, issue can, uh, improve more, um, obviously, you know, even later issues keep improving, obviously, you know, like, if they keep it in a little as focused as this and as well paced as this issue, then I, it can work out better. Um, but yeah, obviously once this, uh, you know, is done, when you can read this in the trade paperback form, it might work a bit better for the earlier issues. I'll, I'll have to read them eventually, but like that, um, which I'll do that eventually when that comes out, do a review of it, but, uh, yeah, anyways, um, my grade, I'm gonna give it a B. So yeah, um, this review went on very long, so, yeah, um, yeah, and the next issue comes out, I believe, September 23rd, so, yeah, um, I took out a review of that then, and obviously once the, uh, first volume of the trade paperback comes out, I'll do a review on that also, and probably the rest of the series, you can check out my reviews for the previous issues, and, um, reviews on all the other current ongoing series also, from, you know, Star Wars, Vader, Afro, and everything else, um, so yeah, I've been, uh, Star Wars Reveal, I'll catch you guys in the next one.